I saw Joe shitting on Sam. That's how we started this. Um, the exploitation of Pokemon the I really want to watch. Live streamers have become some of the most famous and financially successful online creators. They usually have die-hard, cult-like fan bases who are willing to watch them sit at a desk for hours on end. But there is a major cost that comes with this type of attention. Doxing, swatting, harassment, bullying, public scrutiny, obsessive fans, deep True. fakes, and even manipulation from corporate employees. True. Pokimane has been one of the top female streamers in a space that is very much dominated by men. At her peak, she was averaging 40,000 viewers, which is the equivalent of a sold out major league baseball stadium in the United States. She has been subject to a lot of controversy in her near decade long streaming career. Now, some of these incidents have been brought on by herself, but for a lot of them, she seems to be a pawn in a much bigger problem and it's reached a tipping point, starting to realize that all the money might not be worth the risk to be in her position. Stay hydrated. Since the beginning of her career, Pokimane has been accused of having pretty privilege, which is essentially the idea that being attractive makes it much easier to gain success at whatever you do. <laughs> this argument definitely- uh, This is my favorite fucking combo, dude. It's my favorite take. It's like, bro, you got pretty privilege. Like, yeah, there's like a litany of other privileges too does have some truths, but it's often used to minimize the work that women or men have put in to gain all of their notoriety. Yo! Yeah! Yeah! That's where you bring me up, Patrick? Not with, like, the top dogs of the industry. We got fucking washed-ass Ludwig on there as a fucking chess piece, but to bring up a point about pretty privilege? My man! I mean, thank you. Thank you very much for saying I'm pretty. That was very nice of you. That was very kind of you. To say. <laughs> yeah, whenever people say, bro, you got pretty privilege, I'm like, uh -huh. you just said I'm pretty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Pokimane has been streaming consistently for almost 10 years. She had amassed 20,000 followers on Twitch in 2014 before graduating high school. And although it seems like an easy job, being entertaining for hours on end, day in and day out, while sitting at a desk, is very difficult. But she did benefit from the lack of competition. In 2014, Twitch only had around 300,000 daily active viewers. Her game of choice was League of Legends, which is still the Big most mistake. watched game of all time on Big Twitch mistake. by a lot. A young woman who was genuinely interested in the game at that time was extremely rare. On top of being entertaining with her audience and good at the game, she was destined for success. And of course, the way she looked didn't hurt. Many of her followers were likely men Sim. who felt like they could hang around a girl who plays their favorite game, watches anime, and understands meme culture. She was every Reddit and Discord mod's dream girl. Some of her fans would send her hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars for a brief interaction to say their name and thank them for their generosity. These men are often referred to as simps, and they can get extremely out of control. Simp is a slang insult True. for men who are seen as too attentive and submissive to women, especially out of a failed hope of winning some entitled sexual attention or activity from them. The word simp is actually banned on Twitch because it's seen as bullying, but it's likely banned because Twitch profits so much from these men that they want to do everything they can to protect them. And in return, Pokey is the one who gets blamed because she- To be fair, I don't even think it's that. I think it's because like, no, first of all, it's not really banned, number one. Guys, remember the simp discord? Where's Frogan? Where's she at? Remember remember simp? Remember when uh, this topic was like being addressed and everyone in the chat was telling me to stop using simp because it was like created by incels and uh, and and that it was there was a backronym associated with it, which was which most people don't even fucking remember at this point. What was it? Sucker? Uh, for mediocre pussy, is that what it was? Suckers idolizing mediocre pussy. That's what they said simp was, which was a backronym for the record. I, uh, yeah, which was literally like uh, added on afterwards, right? And at the time I was like, you guys are so dumb. This is like such a great word. It is, uh, it's utilized. Everyone is going to keep fucking using it. It's ridiculous. We don't even think about it now, but... Um, my discord was, uh, lit on fire because I chose to use it. And I was like, listen, don't like, don't cave and like give this, uh, any kind of fucking power. It's both short for simpleton 
and also can be utilized in any, you could, you can be utilized in a positive way. You could be utilized in a fucking negative way. It was completely, uh, you know, when it, when it reaches like peak maximum usage, there was a lot of discourse surrounding it. And like I said, uh, you know, not to toot my own horn here, but like I was right. Uh, and everybody uses it anyway. Um, Twitch never actually banned it. Uh, Twitch never actually like, like literally banned it. They just said they would. I, at the time I said it was like really fucking stupid and I don't think they did it because they like benefit from simps, which they do of course. But, uh, I think they did it because they're like hypersensitive and were like very libbed up and wanted to look like they were doing, uh, a positive change. You know what I mean? They look like they were doing something. Anyway, it was never enforced regardless, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, let's continue. She doesn't shame these men for giving her money. A video titled <laughs> Simp Willingly Goes Homeless for Pokimane was uploaded in May of 2020 by It's a Gundam, which used several examples of interactions between Pokimane fans to highlight just how dangerously obsessed some of them appear to be. It's a Gundam came across grown men committing the heinous crime of sad cringe. I'm kind of short on savings, but I'll defo get $500 to drop this week, LMAO. Hope she sees this and knows I love her and miss her. Then somebody replies, only $500? Pathetic. Get your bread up. OP. I got evicted because I- Please nuke Hoscore. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Was four months behind on rent, so yeah. I don't know. I'll see if I can sleep behind a Starbucks so I can use the free Wi-Fi and don't- Yeah, this is a troll. There's no fucking way this was real. I don't want to believe that this is real. This is absolutely fucking insane. Donate the rest of my money. We live in a day and age where men- But of course, remember, 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 like, first of all, I don't, I still don't believe this is real. I don't know if Patrick CC will claim that it's real or not, but what I do find additionally funny is that Gundam is a socialist anime. Suck my dick. I haven't even watched it. And I know that it's like supposed to be like the original Gundam was like literally written by a motherfucking, uh, Japanese communist party, uh, party member. Okay. Uh, that's one. Number two, um, I love when people basically go oh well i don't like this person so they are incapable of making jokes i am going to take everything they say even as a joke whether it be a joke or not even if i know it's a joke i'm going to take it very seriously and get very mad at you that is exactly what the fucking like hammer and sickle twitter lefties do all the fucking time okay they do it to me they do it to everyone on the right uh and and very clearly this guy is doing it to pokimane in this situation okay it's just like, it's so stupid. It's the most cringe thing that people do. But of course, if you're a fucking right winger, or if you're like one of these like basement dwelling, uh, what is this? Low of an option with the current example of one of these guys actually donating hundreds. What is this? I'm very happy for Kara and Eric. God's doing a lot of great things through them. Great video, Melanie. Scrappy is now adorable to Velma. Velma is now a hated character. What is this? In the last 20 hours, he's given $200 and he can't get it, get the follow. What is this? Who, who, I don't even know who the fuck these people are. Yeah, no, it's, it is a, it, it is a right wing weirdo. Anyway, listen, 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 my point is this. Okay. My point is this. Yeah, this is a right-wing simp. Melanie Mac is a right-winger's Pokemane. Oh, okay, got it. Melanie Mac is a dipshit who almost died by not drinking water, Hassan. I love that. <laughs> so you're mad at Train for getting kids addicted to gambling, but not at Pokey for getting them addicted to her beauty and loveliness? Hypocrite. See, that's a joke and a very good one, okay? But like, <laughs> but people would look at this and go, this is another fucking, here's a guy oh, fucking making this idiotic equation. That was a real comment in XTC's chat yesterday. I love that. Okay, 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 okay. Let's get back to this video's fire. And are shaming each other for not giving a woman who's already a millionaire 
the last bit of money they have. Welcome to 2020. It is a horrible time in history. Pokimane reacted to It's a Gundam video and dismissed all the embarrassing tweets as fake. And still to this day, it's unclear if the tweets were real or not. Even if they were fake, it sadly isn't too far from the mentality of some men that watch her streams. But Pokey committed a YouTube cardinal sin, going after the sponsor of the video. Wait, what? The exploitation of Pokimane? I thought this was going to be pro Pokimane. What the fuck's going on? Wait, hold up. That's weird. This is like, there's no way, there's no way Patrick CC is going to fucking title it an exploitation of Pokemon and then like literally fucking uh, hit her like this. I actually can't believe it. anyone would sponsor these shenanigans. She got a lot of heat from YouTubers for this, since it's considered a low blow to go after someone's livelihood. You know what's really funny about this, by the way? They, a, a lot of motherfuckers do this where they're like, they try to like embarrass you for being a fan of a content creator that doesn't have fucking, uh, that doesn't have sponsors, myself. And they try to get you to stop. They try to get you to stop like supporting me uh, via subs and shit, okay? Which, by the way, you don't have to. Like all of this content is literally free, okay? Straight up, okay? Um, but because they can't go after like any fucking... Uh, advertisers i have because i don't have any they go after motherfuckers who are subscribing to be like dude you fucking suck for subscribing you know what i mean it's like oh really so that's not all that different i guess than uh the way that you are behaving podcast though okay what about the podcast great take does the podcast have advertisers why did you just say podcast though because you this this clearly Got a weird obsession with Pokey. I got a weird obsession with Pokey. The fuck do you mean? One, Pokemon is my friend. Two, you literally just said podcast though. You didn't even know if my podcast had ad advertisers or not. It doesn't have advertisers. It's also free on YouTube. I have no fucking advertisers. Every now and then, I, I, I do one fucking sponsor stream, like, once every fucking blue moon, okay? Good, because she didn't like the content. The situation is ironic because Gundam was also kind of going after Pokey's livelihood by bullying people that pay her money. Even if these men have extremely unrealistic expectations, Pokey was defending her fans, which seems like what most people would do in that situation. Either way, she apologized. I want to sincerely apologize to both It's a Gundam and to the sponsor of that video. Dude, I can't believe she literally apologized some fucking freak freak right-wing troll brother oh my lord but of course you have to cave because it's not enough it, it's not worth it it's not worth it for your mental health it's not worth it for your sanity okay for the remarks and comments that i made i completely understand people's concern for going after someone else's livelihood. But this wasn't the first time she had to apologize. There was another controversy that resurfaced from 2014 where she said the n-word. Nick, you ain't funny. <laughs> That's not true. Maybe you're just boring as fuck <laughs> and lame as hell. Cuz <laughs> only lame say that shit. She immediately took to Twitter to try and explain herself. Hard for me to speak on this. <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm sorry <coughs> oh jesus that clip as soon as i see that hue it's like the yellow parenti for me you know what i mean it's like it, <laughs> when i see that hue okay i know what's coming right after she was going through her toronto girl phase in her early 20s every girl from here does that true no, that that's like that basically is like the the Pokemon uh, yellow parenti, you know. That's just it, it, I see that hue. I know what's coming. I know the 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 end bombs about to be dropped. Okay, yeah. I mean, she was like fucking. What, what, how old was she? She was like a teenager. She was like seventeen years old, and in like two thousand and fourteen. That's insane. Um.
like or even before then and yeah she's she fucked up of course um she made continuous and severe lapses on her judgment yeah no don't do the she's also literally african bullshit that i hate that i hate when people do that like okay so elon musk can just say the n-word then like he's also african shut the fuck up I did stop. Don't don't even say that as a joke. It pisses me off so much when motherfuckers who are like simping and unironically horny say shit like that. Anyway, I mean this has been this has been talked about a million times over, but you know, I think this is genuine. clips context because it's so old i'm almost 23 and was I mean, under actually now that i realize that this apology was not that good <laughs> holy shit i never had seen this rage in that clip but it was definitely not said in a racist or derogatory manner she said adding it was a time period and environment where saying it was more common and used as a replacement for dude and i've never said it in a racist way hard r either Almost everyone below this tweet rallied in support for Pokimane, pointing out that this expose seemed like digging up old irrelevant Yeah, that that part is true though. That was definitely that was definitely like classic old thing that you've said or done that's like weaponized against you endlessly. <laughs> Usually because you don't represent those values any longer. Which is like very fucking stupid. I hate it. You guys already know. I've talked about it a million times over. Very, very, very stupid shit. People change. Then clips of someone with the sole purpose of publicly humiliating them out of spite. However, as Pokimane became more and more popular, this clip resurfaced often. She apologized yeah. for the second time in 2020. I've commented on this in the past, but honestly, my statement or comments then weren't even good enough. Even though people were very understanding, I just want to make it clear that I am genuinely so sorry if I hurt or offended anyone with what I said. I He's having the items right now on the weirdo, right? Yes. I think like people do that. People do that on purpose because they like, they can't imagine change. You know what I mean? Like they can't imagine. They're very cynical. They're very sad. They're in this like reactionary fucking toxic space where they honestly, a lot of people, a lot of kids on the internet do this where they imagine edginess or mistake edginess as like uh, being genuine. And the only way that you can be genuine is if you're edgy. The only way that you can be genuine is if you're toxic, right? Because a lot of them are like genuinely toxic. So they think that's the only way that you can be uh, genuine, that you're showing that you're like a legit guy. And... They don't do that for Alex Jones, bro. He can change. Yeah, because Alex Jones hasn't changed. That's that's the reason why they don't do that. Yes, exactly. No, that's the point. Because no one who... Everyone who has stayed on that path and gotten more and more reactionary, they never get hit with the receipts because they don't have to get hit with the receipts because people think on the internet that even perceived hypocrisy is worse than like someone being actively bad, okay? Even the perception of hypocrisy, even if you aren't even hypocritical, whether it be like my hedonistic uh, consumption choices or whatever, right? That is seen as a perceived hypocrisy. And that is so much worse. That is so much fucking worse in the minds of so many fucking brain broken Zoomers Okay, and just brain broken people in general than like people doing currently bad things. <laughs> I really wish I could go back in time and change the past. Unfortunately, I can't, but I do hope that my behavior in regards to language for the last couple of years and onwards will speak for itself. Keep in mind at this point in 2020, she was easily the largest female Twitch streamer and one of the top streamers, period. She is now an owner of Offline TV, which is essentially a streamer production house consisting of her friends that create content together and individually. They all work together and use their network to grow everyone's social media presence. And at the time, all of the biggest streamers were collaborating with each other to play the game Among Us. People value a person's word and consistency above all else, except I have been fucking consistent for the past 10 years and motherfuckers still bring up shit that goes beyond that, okay? Or motherfuckers still literally 
will say that like they will create a a uh, hypocrisy where no such hypocrisy exists because they're bad faith. Like it doesn't matter. No one has ever been like, I mean, obviously people who are favorable to me here in my own community recognize that like uh, a lot of times I'll just like pull up a video from fucking 2017 or 2016 when I first like um, started uh, doing like political commentary, okay? And they go, damn, like uh, that's crazy that you're saying the exact same things so many years later, right? But outside of this circle... People who are uncharitable will never look to that and go, wow, he is very, uh, he is very uh, consistent. The gotcha fucks come crawling out of the depths to train themselves to be a better human observation tactics. You don't get that online. You freak. You wouldn't say any of that in person. I'm just the, what? Uh, imagine if you did what would happen if someone says shit like that to you, Lamau. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, there are people who say, waiting for someone to say, I'm raining genocide comment. That's a good take. Wow, you're such a hero, son. I never said I am. I'm just a fucking content creator. There is nothing important about what I do. You are the one who gives me that power in your mind. Remember that. Okay? I'm a fucking Twitch streamer, and I try to do the most with the limited amount of power and, and wealth that I have. Okay? That's it. I'm no different. I'm no different than any other fucking Twitch streamer. Remember that. You're the one who's like, you were expected to be a hero. You were expected to arm the revolution. Meanwhile, none of the fucking 60,000 plus subscribers think that that is the case. No, no one is like literally being like, I'm gifting you a subscription because I know hero complex. No, I don't have it. No, you're too stupid to understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. I'm telling you right now, I do not have this hero complex. You are attributing that to me and assuming that I have this complex. You're doing it. You're doing it literally while I'm explaining it to you. Listen to your ego. Oh, my God. I don't have a hero complex. I'm telling you I'm a fucking idiot. I'm just an idiotic fucking Twitch streamer. The only difference is I just don't eat my toenails, and I like talking about politics. That's it. Always remember that. It's very frustrating, though, to, like, have someone engage in the most, like, Twitter-ass shit in real time. When I have the capacity to, like, actually respond to it in real time, and yet people still have the capabilities of doing it. Does that make sense? Anyway. Everything that she was doing was being very meticulously watched and analyzed. This is when a large amount of hate started pouring in. People expressed their disdain for Pokimane, saying her personality was fake, forced, and only saying and doing things to fit what she thinks her brand should be. I think it's also worth mentioning that people... Ex this is also the other side of that, like, edginess, uh, uh, cynicism that I just mentioned to you guys. When you are super edgy and you're in edgy circles and you think that that is the only way to, like, be truthful... You literally automatically, they say the same about you, I know, you automatically assume that when someone is being nice, they must be doing it for some other reason. Okay? It's like, it's unimaginable for, for these guys to ever like think maybe someone is literally like a good person. But they recognize that that's a good thing, right? In a weird way, even inside of their own internal moral compass, inside of this like limited logical vacuum that they have tried to cultivate, they still believe that even showing yourself as a good person is a good thing, okay? But no one will actually do that purely because they genuinely believe it. It must be for some other reason. And it's basically, and a, a chatter, I just caught you saying it too. It's basically the, the assumption that it's too good to be true. Like, 
this is something I hear all the time about myself. Uh, people will routinely say things like, Hassan is always trying to just say whatever the most popular idea is. He's always just trying to say whatever the most politically correct thing is. He can't possibly believe these things internally. Okay. Like, first of all, not even true because, you know, America deserved 9-11. That's not exactly a very popular take. But, and also a century of fucking uh, Red Scare propaganda and uh, the fact that I get canceled literally every fucking uh, week uh, would probably show you that that's maybe not the most popular. But let's say it was, then that's awesome. Uh, that's great. Like, you know, it's cool. Great. Makes me happy. Yeah, try to defend Palestine and go unscathed. Yeah, I know. It is odd that you are still, it is odd that you are still assuming that like, I could not possibly be saying these things because I believe in it. Even though you yourself are admitting that those are good things to say. Can we correctly, positively reinforce this conversation? This is an important topic in my opinion. This is a legitimately strong argument against internet toxicity. I mean, I, I talk about it regularly. He did that shit with Saikuno and he's not, never done anything wrong. Exactly. Because we're very cynical. We're all very cynical people. We always think, I think capitalism and hyper-individualism, uh, capitalism and hyper-individualism is like rotted everyone's cores, basically, where they think like, oh no, someone can't just like be wholesome or someone can't be like a good person otherwise or unproblematic. Like there has to be a secondary reason for it. You know? That's it. People are upset that online content creators put on a show or an act of persona in a content isn't that isn't exactly who they are in reality, which is an unreasonable expectation considering how entertainment works. Yeah, but like with Twitch streamers, we blur that line a lot where like our persona online is impossible to keep up with if it wasn't genuine. You know what I mean? Which is what breaks people's minds a lot. So if you are legitimately like who you say you are, because I'm live fucking eight hours a day. You really think I could just straight up fucking lie for eight hours and I just like turn off the fucking camera and then immediately become like an entirely different toxic, like racist, transphobic person? Why the fuck? If that was the case, then why the fuck would I literally even advocate for the things that I advocate for when I could very easily advocate for transphobia, which is a very popular concept? Aiden Ross said there are only two genders immediately after he got banned from uh, Twitch. And he got like 500,000 likes. You're going to sit here and tell me that like that's not the popular take? It's such a popular sentiment that people that are on the downtrend can hit that transphobia button to revitalize their careers. They use it as like a lifeline, basically. So why would I, if I truly had like transphobic opinions, why would I spend hours and hours and hours advocating against them, giving people the tools to fight against them on the internet and, and trying to change people's minds every single fucking day? What, to like play on New Game Plus difficulty? I'm such a good transphobe that I want to make sure that like it's even harder for me to be transphobic. That's what I like. That's my secret fucking, you know, that's my, my secret kink. You know? They implicitly confirm by dogging on you that you are doing the right thing. I mean, yeah. Anyway. Let's continue. Expect YouTube. Money, sponsors, let's be real, dude. You have to otherwise, you don't have a platform for get to gift for looks? To grift for looks? Wait. What sponsors? Again, every single, every single person that shits on me 
doesn't fucking realize that they're like literally shadow boxing with something that doesn't exist. So if, if that is the case, if I'm doing this for sponsorships, okay, then where are my sponsors? Where are my sponsors? Where are they? Why are they not here in the room with us right now? Do you understand? So you did something. I'm not going to yell at you or anything like that. You did something that a lot of people do without realizing. Okay? If what you were saying was true, you wouldn't have to... Uh, if you're, what you were saying was true and it was a grift and all this stuff, okay? Then you wouldn't have to add additional seasoning to it to try to, like, make this stick. Okay? But, but because you couldn't find, like a, like, a reasonable way... Because you couldn't find a, a reasonable way to just like say, you're a grifter, here's why you changed your mentality, and uh, blah, blah, blah. You, you had to add that lie in there. You know what I mean? So think about that. Think about who you're fighting this fight for. Think about how these opinions got into your mind and how you internalize them. I don't know, man. Trying real hard to justify yourself. Wait, what? Yeah, because you just lied. You, you couldn't come up with a good reason and you couldn't come up with a good example. And I'm trying to describe to you that you're wrong. And instead of recognizing that you're wrong, you just doubled down and said, well, you just defended yourself from me, a person just lying. You are stupid enough to take me seriously, a random chatter. Okay? Like, I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to, I'm trying to not yell at you. I'm trying to be as open-minded as possible. And instead of you recognizing that and, and then maybe being like, okay, maybe I was wrong about this. Instead of doing that, you just turned around and decided to just double down and say, well, you're justifying yourself. Wrong. No, I mean, you're a streamer. You're clearly disingenuous to a fault. Brother, you've been on this platform since 2014. Do you think it's, healthy? it's, it's helping you? You think, you think it's healthy for you to just like have this much hatred for fucking streamers? You've been on the platform since 2014. You created an account in 2014. You've been on this platform for longer than I have. I got here at like 2018, didn't go full-time until 2020, okay? You just basically said streamer automatically bad. I'm willing to bet if I were to look at your account right now, okay? I'm willing to bet if I look at your account right now, you probably have streamers that you do like. I'm willing to bet that if I were to look at who you follow, there would be streamers that you do actually like that you don't consider to be disingenuous, but it would go back to that same cycle, wouldn't it? You stream Hogwarts Legacy. Oh, you can't actually... What? What is this? Why did you link your own shit? You can't look at who people follow now? That's weird. We looked at it. This is it. They're following 59 channels, dude. Including friends of mine as well. <sighs> anyway. It's, you got to get out of this toxic mentality, brother. What'd you find, sir? I mean... 
I found that you are a big fan of Twitch since 2014. And you still have this uh, automatic assumption that like every single streamer is disingenuous to a fault. And you couldn't find where that disingenuous attitude came from. But what you are mistaking is your own personal suspicions with what is reality. And when you don't have a real fucking take on this matter, okay, when you came at it with like the sponsor shit, you immediately fell back down to, well, you're just trying to justify yourself. Does that make sense? Oh, thanks, bud. Just made my wife's day. I was just trying to trigger you. Didn't expect you to read this. this is gold. Okay, that's so sad, bro. Ugh. Yeah, sure. Your wife. Anyway, let's continue. Youtubers and streamers to be 100% themselves because they give off this assumption that they are normal people and not acting. But it's almost always an enhanced version of themselves. Like my second channel is just me wearing goofy glasses and being overly animated. I mean, that is me or a side of me, but it also has elements of a character. But her N-word controversy would resurface again in 2022, and this time it took a twist nobody could have ever predicted. This controversy involves the very popular comedy YouTuber Jideon, who was just starting up his Twitch account in January of 2022. Jideon is known for being a troll, but his intentions are pure. He reacted to a video of Pokimane saying the N-word. Then he tweeted the video. Then one week later on January 13th, Jideon goes live to more than 10,000 viewers. He had more viewers than Pokimane after his first week on the platform. So he instructed his viewers to go to her stream and spam the phrase L plus ratio, which was his way of trolling and bragging to her. Pokimane was simply minding her business. So why did he go after her? Well, because she is known as the queen of Twitch and trolling her is kind of a meme, but militizing his audience is known as hate rating, which is against TOS on Twitch. As she is getting flooded with spam, people start telling her that it's coming from Jideon, to which he gets mad at them for snitching. And then he says this. If you're from Pokemon, uh, I mean, if you're from <laughs> Pokemon's chat, Yo. and you have a penis, I'm gonna tell you this right now. She is not gonna fuck you, bro. I don't care how much you donated. I don't care. I think this is more embarrassing for Jideon to bring this up uh, than anything, really. Like, it, it was, I don't even think that he himself uh, agrees with this shit. Uh, what Hassan on his way to be so triggered he doesn't raise his voice at all? L, wait, what? Care how many hours you watch her? Considering that he apologized for this, she has a man, bro. You you probably don't want to hear this. You probably don't want to hear this. You probably don't want to hear this. But I'm sorry, I'm gonna break the fourth wall. And spoiler alert, she's getting down every night by another nigga. She is getting down, deep stroked. Balls deep. Oh, no, no. Balls banging oh, no. on the wall. No. Every night. Pokimane responded to the harassment by saying whoever was responsible, if you get banned, I'm not going to be sad, and then ended her stream. But the story gets a little weirder when Ninja somehow got alerted about what was happening, and he got in contact with Jideon to let him know. Yeah, this was, this made it so much worse. <laughs> that he was screwed. I'm not gonna lie, I, I like Patrick's videos. This video is like, this video could have been cut very differently. I promise you guys that it's Energy really, wise. Really don't think I could do. Ninja was right. Once Twitch became aware of the incident, they banned Jadeon for 14 days, which later turned into a permanent ban following an appeal prior to his 14 day ban period. People suspected that Jadeon received such a harsh consequence because Pokimane is regarded as Twitch's golden child that they will do anything to protect. After Jadeon updated his social media follow- Like, the reason why this was a bigger deal when Ninja fucking defended Jadeon which again, remember, Gideon literally apologized for this and made amends and it's like rehash shit, right? Um, but like when Ninja got involved, when Ninja got involved, it made it so much worse because like Ninja should know better. Like Ninja should literally know better as a massive content creator at a certain point. And that was what everyone's perspective was at that point. Where, like, it was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, like, you know, what, what are you, what are you saying? Like, you should know better. You should be, like, talking to, uh, 
you should be talking to Gideon instead uh, of, of like defending him. You know what I mean? Um, but also, ultimately, if uh, Gideon had never actually snuck in, I mean, I, I, I say this all the time, Gideon should have been unbanned before TwitchCon EU. I think he should have been unbanned before TwitchCon EU. A lot of people never forgave him, but ultimately, if like he is, has the war with all the Mega Mans, if he's literally fucking, uh, you know, uh, if he's patching things up in that regard, apologizing to the person that he had offended, you know, I, I think it's ridiculous that they kept him banned, right? I thought that was fucked up. But then, of course, after TwitchCon EU, when he snuck in, it was over. Twitch is never going to fucking unban you after that, you know? Um, I, I, I like, uh, some of Gideon's sketches. I've talked about this before. I think like I've, crit I've been critical of some of his sketches in the past. Um, you know, I, I think that he should have been unbanned. I think that he should have been unbanned from, uh, Twitch after the apology. Yeah. Let's have sex in a bank. Tell what is this? I hate a privileged rapper who don't even know what it takes. The diamonds they hit like a rainbow, that's cause the necklace of Frank. Oh my god, it's real! That's the XCC's really good point on this video. Anyway, um, getting back to this. Followers on the state of his Twitch account, people instantly began blaming Pokey. Pokeyman clarified the following day that she had nothing to do with Jideon's ban and claimed that Jideon and his fans were targeting her because she's a woman. The reason Pokeyman mentioned her gender is that during Jideon's stream, he taunted Pokey's male audience and told them no matter how much they donated, Pokey wasn't going to sleep with them. Ludwig chimed in on this and basically said that this is just something Pokeyman has to deal with. Do is have sex with Pokey, which, you know, it sucks. <laughs> that, that's how it, it doesn't just suck. It's not fucking okay. I'm so tired of people. Fucking right wing YouTuber Elwig, dude. Typical, typical fucking mogul moves, baby. Had to hit that center button a little too hard there, buddy. This is why mogul male is right wing, okay? People acting like it just sucks and it's unlucky. And it just is what it is. I don't want to be in an industry where that just sucks. I do not want it to be is anymore. Please, yes, thank you. I can't even English anymore. I'm so sick of this shit. There seemed to be a huge divide. A lot of men thought Pokey was being overly dramatic, and Ludwig was just pointing out the reality of sexism that exists on Twitch. But others thought Pokey's frustration is justified, as she is constantly being sexualized day in and day out when she's just a girl who plays video games. It's true. But some people are convinced that Pokemane is lying, and that she purposely tries to appear single to maintain her innocent and single persona. If men assume that she's single, their parasocial bond increases, and they are more likely to send her gifts and money or maybe because, like, people stalk her shit non-fucking-stop and hyper-analyze every single motherfucking thing that she does, which is precisely the reason why there's no, like, element of privacy to a public persona in the same way that, like, actual celebrities have, okay? Perhaps that could be the reason. I don't know. If they truly believe that one day she might notice them, or maybe she just wants to keep her private life private, like everyone else. But before Gideon would end up apologizing exactly. for his behavior, things took an insane twist. Ninja brought up the situation again when people were in his chat begging him to try to help Gideon get unbanned. In order to get viewers to stop spamming, he claims that he texted his partner manager to help him out. All right, all right, I sent the text. I can't, I don't promise, I don't promise a goddamn thing. Pokimane did not like this. Seeing him on a call with Ninja and Ninja like allied with him, and saying, oh, like, I'll try to make sure your ban isn't too bad. Yeah, that was so whack. That's a little weird. Then she tweeted, it baffles me when other streamers don't stand up against blatant harassment or misogyny. While discussing all of this on a live stream. Yeah, I think what many people are just failing to recognize here, or at least like the energy of this video is not like, the energy of this video is just like almost too descriptive without like any sort of, without any sort of like uh, like personal assessment uh, involved, where it the framing of it comes across like she's the the reason why she's in all this controversy is because like she starts it. 
it's classic. It's like whenever people say about me, like, oh, Hassan, you're fucking, you love drama. You love drama. When like, in a lot of instances, like I'm either covering it because, you know, everyone does commentary, myself included, usually when it's a newsworthy subject or uh, because someone has brought me into it for no fucking reason whatsoever. And I have to find myself, um, uh, you know, defending uh, myself, right? It's just like, it should be mentioned in my opinion. I, bro, I get why long-term subs go crazy. Having to listen to the same tags every fucking day. Bro, I get why long-term subs go crazy. Yeah, well, they also hear that at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute fucking ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you could do for five, $5 or for free, or you can get gifted a sub. Fuck you, okay? Why are we rehashing this out of curiosity? We're rehashing it because uh, it's a good video that just came out about Pokimane and the exploitation of Pokimane. And I actually came in thinking, I came into the conversation thinking that it was going to be a little bit different and it didn't turn out to be that way, um, surprisingly. Like I, what are people rating out of 10? The segue itself, that's what they're rating out of 10. In a lot of instances, this is just because, like, you know, she's uh, she's at the top of the leaderboard, so she's a, you know, she's a viable target. Very good one. Especially because it, like, automatically has, like, a dedicated hate watcher community that will jump on board and immediately fucking shower you with clicks. Bro, you are stumbling on a lot of your words today, more than usual. Are you okay? Hope all is good. Crazy. Anyway, let's continue. Stream Ninja Sharky, thank you for the tank of the and subs. let her know that he didn't actually contact his representative at Twitch. We only know this because Pokey shared the DM to her audience while she was streaming, with the final words being, you're making a big mistake. This appeared to be a threat which was kind of confirmed by a second exposed DM from Ninja's wife saying that they are considering everything Pokey was saying as defamation of character and they are getting their legal team involved. But these threats never really amounted to anything. Jadeon privately and publicly apologized to Pokimane, asking his supporters to stop harassing her social media accounts. He says his actions were corny and he was being petty. Pokimane responded by accepting his apology, and they even did a collaboration together and consider each other friends to this day. It's pretty clear that Jadeon made a mistake, owned up to his mistake, and the person who was the victim in the situation forgave him. But Twitch still has banned Jadeon, and they do not plan on allowing him to come back to their platform. Free Jadeon, y'all. But Pokimane's overreaction to being sexualized and harassed for being a woman reached a tipping point recently that may just have her ready to quit. Twitch streamer Brandon Ewing known online as Atrioc, accidentally exposed himself after exiting a game he was streaming and allowing viewers to see all the tabs he had open on his screen, one of which was a website that had deepfake pornographic content. The website featured deepfakes of fellow female streamers such as Pokimane, Maya Higa, QT Cinderella, and many more. Though Atrioc quickly switched tabs without trying to draw attention to them, it was too late. Screen grabs were taken and shared across the internet. Atrioc issued a tearful apology, stating that this is not a pattern of behavior, but that he fell down an AI rabbit hole at 2am one morning and ended up on the site. However, the website charges $15 a month to watch the provided content, meaning that Atrioc must have intentionally created an account and entered his credit card willingly. Atrioc, who is married, made the apology video along with his wife, who was also crying. What made the situation even creepier is that he's friends with some of the women featured on the site, with some having already responded. Streamers like QT Cinderella and Sweet Anita spoke out against the deep fake pornography on their respective Twitter. You see these updates? You've been doing good shit recently? Yes, uh, I have. Uh, we were supposed to talk about it on the last episode of the podcast, and we will um, uh, eventually. But yeah, he's doing a lot. Uh, he's doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes to, you know, right his wrongs.
Twitter accounts, with QT Cinderella expressing the pain that she's facing in the wake of such horrors on a Twitch stream. Female streamers are continuously finding themselves being sexualized without their consent. They are often harassed for simply being a woman within the streaming community, and this is just one more way that they are denied their basic humanity by having these deep fakes of themselves in a sexually explicit manner put on the internet, with very little they can do about it. According to Matthew B. Kugler, a professor of law at Northwestern University, since deep fakes began appearing online in 2015, they've become more convincing every year, growing in quality and quantity. Research by Sensity AI, a company that monitors deep fakes, found in 2018 that 90 to 95 percent of deep fakes were non-consensual porn, which Kuglar explained could be traumatic for the victim. A 2019 report from Deep Trace, a technology research company, found that 99 percent of pornographic deep fakes featured female celebrities. Psychotherapist Lisa Sanfilippo, whose expertise includes sexual trauma, told Insider that creating false pornographic images is a major violation. She said that for the victim, seeing images of yourself or images that are falsified to look like you in acts that you might find reprehensible, scary, or that would only be for your personal life can be very destabilizing, even traumatizing. There is no ability to give consent there. Basically, everyone agrees that deep fakes are mostly going to be used for bad things, and because of this, people are starting to understand why Pokimane and other female streamers are fed up with being sexualized. Because all of those overreactions have built up to this deep fake stuff, which is being denounced by everyone. Pokimane didn't really address the deep fakes as closely as others. She seems really fed up with the constant over-sexualization of her and her peers. And it's not just coming from her obsessive fans, it's also coming from Twitch employees. Just a few months ago, Pokimane opened up to viewers during a live stream about a well-networked professional in the streaming industry, who allegedly faked a romantic relationship with Poki to get close to women in her community. Um, someone that I and many streamers have been working with for years Someone who was also employed at a large company in the industry has targeted and manipulated girls specifically in my community. After watching this, I'm like, damn, I hope Patrick doesn't make a video about uh, me like this. God damn. I feel like he would just like rehash all the drama and like leave it at that without, uh, <laughs> without actually addressing the context. He'd be like, yeah, Hassan in uh, August of 2020 decided to make the uh, unfortunate purchase of a home, which of course is unacceptable. And the price of the home was really, really, really high. And that was actually his own uh, fault. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like the many mistakes of Hassan Avi. falsifying a romantic and sexual relationship with me. She explained, Pokimane went on to claim that the individual leaked privileged information he gathered from his job and threatened to harm himself if the targeted girl- I don't think he's, a, I don't think he's a bad guy and I don't think he's an awful dude or anything like that. You know the expectation of Hassan with a banger? People gang up on you as a meta to farm followers reviews? The most out of clip shit, it's gonna be draining. Yeah, it always, people still do it, dude. People. Whenever you see fucking clips of me from like 20, I don't know, fucking 2020 or whatever, like remember that motherfuckers literally, motherfuckers would like literally go back and comb through my VODs to find something that they can clip out of context and use it. Like I saw some fucking clip going around from like when I was talking about how difficult it is to, to do IRL streams, like when I was like literally something that I've said many, many times over, like. I don't understand how IRL streams do this. Their streamers do this. They're like the fucking backbone of, of content creation. Bad timing to say he's not a bad guy. Oh, I was talking about Patrick, not the fucking weirdo loser who was like uh, exploiting, uh, doing the, the Pokemon stuff. It's so crazy. It's so crazy that like, like someone fucking literally, someone literally fucking clipped me talking about, someone clipped me talking about how difficult it is for IRL streamers, not myself, but for IRL streamers to like actually uh, do so much for, for much less revenue overall. And, and it, it's from like, 2021 or something i'm like bro you literally look through a fucking vod in like 2021 to find something 
to like clip out of context and now like it just trying to blast that like it's insane it's sad brother ever came forward a few months ago um a few girls in my community came forward to me with some concerns and asked to speak to my manager they proceeded to send my manager countless screenshots and videos of their conversation with him proving the lying and manipulation that was going on Pokimane said the person would approach girls in her community and tell them he struggled with mental health issues to gain their trust before sending fabricated conversations between himself and her. He would then allegedly send fake explicit photos of Pokimane, hoping to receive similar images from the women in her community with whom he was speaking. He acted like he knew and hung out with me and my friends in person, she explained. I fell off. This is someone I've never met. It's truly some of the most disgusting and deplorable behavior I've ever heard of. I have. Pokemon stated that the person was fired after an investigation was conducted into their behavior. This wasn't even the first time someone who worked at Twitch was fired for sexual misconduct. And it seems like Twitch is clearly confused as to where they draw the line with sexual conduct. They want to promote body positivity and their hot tub section, which is very clearly softcore porn that promotes the culture of paying women to be lewd on camera. Twitch also makes a ton of money from this part of their platform, and that's all good and fine to support. But for streamers like Pokimane who just want to play games, they have to deal with the audiences of those lewd streamers who can just click. This is why I hate, by the way, this is why I fucking hate this kind of fucking take, okay? Like, it's the fault of fucking psychotic weirdos who sexualize all women, whether there are, whether there are hot tub streamers or not, there are always going to be psychotic fucking weirdos who sexualize and objectify women okay the the i mean i even duked it out back in the day like not duked it out but like had a reasonable disagreement with cutie cinderella over this uh i love cutie of course that dude's logging your chat why do you constantly sound like you're on the verge of tears keg w Typical. Yes, but Twitch promotes it. Your boobs are so good, man. I love them. Let me suck them shit. Okay, calm down. Um, anyway, uh, misogyny is the problem here. Objectification of women is the problem here. Okay? Like... Hot tub streams or like, uh, you know, any kind of erotic content that women choose to do is not the fucking issue. It doesn't justify objectification. It doesn't justify misogyny. That's not an argument that I am ever going to agree to. Okay. So understand that. Like if that was the case, then women wouldn't be fucking sexualized in like, uh, I don't know, Saudi Arabia, for example, you know? where uh, no such public displays are allowed, and yet people still, you know, there's still rape there, okay? There's still objectifications there. It happens. It takes the responsibility away. It takes the responsibility away from those who are actually the ones who are doing the fucked up shit, and they were doing the fucked up shit before Hot Tub Meta existed, okay? Okay? And they're going to continue doing it after the hot tub meta has long and died out as it has. Dumb. Click one tab and harass Pokimane. But a lot of people don't see it as harassment because the streamers are profiting from it. So then Poke... They objectify themselves. Lamau. <sighs> Come on, Lamau. It wasn't added. The fuck? Except for the ads. Come on, Lamau. They objectify themselves. What the fuck? Okay. Someone can choose to do sexual content, okay? There is still a proper way to consume that. Don't be a fucking loser, okay? And certainly don't be a fucking loser and go to another female streamer and another female streamer's chat and decide to sexualize them, okay? You cannot harass people just because some content creators have chosen to offer you this service, okay? Please, I'm trying to be as nice as possible. It's consent.
Consent is key. Okay? Speaking up just makes people assume she is sensitive and annoying, and that she should be grateful that she is rich. Overall, it seems like she is fed up with all of this. She's streaming less than she ever has, and still finding herself in the middle of controversies. And considering everything that's happened, all the money might not be worth subjecting herself to this bullshit any longer. The Mona Lisa. We prank Mona Lisa. We're going to want auctions in a second. Blueprint 2001. Thank you for the fire to one gift subs. That was Patrick CC's The Exploitation of Pokemon. Um... I, uh, you know, it was, it was all right. Like I, I, I like his other videos more. You don't go to a pie shop, eat a pie, then go to the hairdressers and ransack their fridge. Wow. Dave's legend. Dave legend. What a perfect fucking take. Love that. had a realization and realized that these do these are doing the same thing <laughs> kind of funny true oh my god what a great fucking take by Bagenzo or also known as Bazinga It's been a while since I was able to watch it consistently and seeing you not lose it on terrible gray name chatter takes is a little jarring while Stunlock is on was a classic really enjoying the streams man I'm trying to do my I'm trying to do my very best to not get as angry as I once was um because I I think I I used to get too mad and I'm trying to be better and and you know i want to i want to gain more charitability from a lot of my interlocutors but also uh in order to do so i need to also be as charitable as i can to those who are uncharitable i think a lot of people see that though and see that as like a like a challenge a fake painting in the same room and the French police. Why is all of this happening? 